two, we are going to graph linear equations in two variables. Let's start out by reminding you that on a number line, which is not two-dimensional, uh, each point corresponds to a number. On a plane, then, each point corresponds to a pair of numbers, which we call an ordered pair. We need to draw an x-axis and a y-axis perpendicular to each other. The intersection of those two lines forms the origin, or the point 0, 0 that we label 0, or big capital O. We call that plane the coordinate plane, or we call it the Cartesian plane because it was invented by Rene Descartes. The first number in this ordered pair is the x value, called the x-coordinate, or sometimes we call it the abscissa. Second number is the y-coordinate, or we call it the ordinate, which with you see the word ordinate, we can understand why now we call them the coordinates of a point. All right, and then when we take two lines, the x and y axes, and draw them in a plane, it divides the plane into four regions called quadrants, prefix quad meaning four. And we use Roman numerals starting the upper right corner and rotating counterclockwise. And we can see here are the quadrants. We have quadrant number one, quadrant number two, quadrant number three, quadrant number four in this area. Our x-axis going horizontal, our y-axis going vertical. So let's look at our first example, and that's to graph a couple of ordered pairs on the same coordinate plane. We've got the set of points 3, 1, 0, 5, negative 4, 5, and 6, negative 7. So if we plot them on our graph, 3, 1, we start at the origin. The first value, 3, is the x value, so we go right 3 because it's positive 3, and then we go up 1, since the second point is the y value, and put a dot there. Our next point, 0, 5, means we're going to go nowhere left and right from the origin for the x component. And then the y value is 5, so we're going to go up 5 points. All right, then we've got the point negative 4, 5, so we're going to start at the origin, count left 4, because it's negative 4 for the x value, and then up 5, since it's positive 5 for the y value, that's our point. And the point 6, negative 7, we start at the origin. Positive 6 means go to the right 6 units. Negative 7 means go down 7 units for the y value. And there are our points. It's important that not only do we plot them, but we also label them. All right, hopefully that should be familiar from Algebra 1. So let's move on. And we want to be able to graph some points in an equation. So we want to find and graph five of the solutions to 2x plus 4y equals 8. So let's start with the equation. We may wish to get y by itself. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides of the equal sign. And that leaves us with 4y equals negative 2x plus 8. Divide everything in sight by 4, we'll get y by itself. So y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 2. Now that we have y by itself, we're going to make a chart of points for x and y. We're going to select some x values. I recommend some negative points, some positive points, and 0. And we'll substitute and see what we get. If you put in negative 2 times negative 1 half, we get positive 1. Positive 1 plus 2 is 3 for the y value. If we put in negative 1, negative 1 times negative 1 half is positive 1 half. 1 half plus 2 is 2 and a half for the y value. If we put in 0, 0 times anything is 0. 0 plus 2 is 2, so the y value is 2. If we substitute in 1 times negative 1 half is negative 1 half. 2 plus negative 1 half is positive 1 and 1 half. And if we put in positive 2 times negative 1 half, we'll get negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1 for the y value. So there's five solutions. What we need to do now is to graph them. So here's the point, negative 2, positive 3. Next point is the point, negative 1, 2 and a half. Then we're going to plot 0, 2. We're going to plot 1, 1 and a half, and we're going to plot the points 
two, one. Hopefully they're all collinear, and if you remember, collinear means all in a straight line. We learned that in geometry. So we connect the dots with a straight line, and that is the graph, not only of these five points, but of the entire line, 2x plus 4y equals 8. And it's a straight line, which brings us to a theorem that says the graph of every equation in the form a times x to the first power plus some constant b times y to the first power equals c is a straight line. Important thing here is both a and b cannot be zero. One of them can, a can be zero as long as b is not, or b can be zero as long as a is not, but not both of them are zero. So let's graph 3x minus 5y equals 15. As we look at this equation and the theorem, we know in advance that whatever the graph looks like, it will be a straight line. So let's start with that. We might want to get y by itself. So if we subtract 3x from both sides, negative 5y is negative 3x plus 15. If we divide everything in sight by negative 5 to get y by itself, y is negative 3 fifths x minus 3. So, sorry, negative 3 divided by negative 5 is positive 3 fifths x, and then 15 divided by negative 5 is negative 3. Let's make a chart of points. We're going to select some numbers for x, a couple of negatives, 0, a couple positives. Why am I not using 1 and 2 and negative 1 and negative 2? Well, our, we have a denominator of 5, so I want to choose points that are multiples of 5 to avoid fractions. Negative 10, positive 10 would be a little bit large on my graph. So if we put in negative 5, the 5's cross reduce out and leave me with negative 3 minus 3, which is negative 6 for the y value. If we put in 0 times anything is 0, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. If we put in positive 5, the 5's cross reduce, 3 over 5 times 5 over 1. And we're left with 3 minus 3, which is equal to 0. All right, let's start with our graph paper. And from there, we're going to plot the point negative 5, negative 6. We'll continue and plot the point 0, negative 3. And plot the point 5, 0. Looks like they're all in a straight line, so let's get our straight edge and draw that. And that's the graph of our equation, 3x minus 5y equals 15. All right, let's do another one. In this particular case, it looks like we have 0 times x plus 1 times y equals 6. So it looks like we have a situation where 1 of the a is 0, b is not in this case. And the nice thing about this is there's no x in the equation. I don't need a chart of points. No matter what the x value is, y is always going to be 6. Whether x is 0, y is 6. x is 1, y is 6. x is 4, y is 6. x is negative 4, y is 6. You can get the idea that no matter what x is, y is 6, which means it has to be a horizontal line going through that point that crosses the y-axis at 6. So no matter what x is, y is always 6. That gives us the graph of a horizontal line. All right, similarly, if we are missing the y but have the x, x is always negative 7. There's no y in the equation. No matter what y is, x is always going to be negative 7. Whether y is 0, y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or negative 1, negative 2, no matter what y is, x is always going to be negative 7. Now, what we can also think of this in another way, and here's kind of a quick way to check our work. If there's no x in the equation, our graph should never cross the x-axis. If it never crosses the x-axis, the only way that, that can happen is if it's parallel to the x-axis, and that's true in this case. Likewise, with example 5, if there's no y in the equation, my graph will never cross the y-axis, 
The only way that's true is if it's parallel to it, which gives us a vertical line, and that's true in this case. And that's our look at graphing for today.